Hi everyone, good morning or good afternoon or good evening whenever you're, you're watching into this video. Um, hope you're all well. We're still going strong in our in our series, The Names and Titles of Jesus. Um, there's so many, isn't there? And it's uh, all with different meanings. Throughout my life, I've been known by three names generally. Um, I, all my friends used to call me Daz. And then when I got married, Lisa always called me Darren. So if you've known me since marriage, then you probably called me Darren. In the, the workplace, I used to be called Mr. Vardy, some people used to call me. And over the years, I've been called lots of names that probably aren't appropriate for a church video. So um, I'll leave that one with you. But Jesus' names all have significance and meaning about what he's like, who he is, and how we can relate, and how we can know him personally. So this morning, when I looked at the, the vast list of names to choose from i chose this one in the book of revelation chapter 1 and verse 4 it says this john's introducing the book and he says grace and peace to you from him who was and is and is to come so i pulled out some commentaries and started looking into the meaning behind the name and it was all getting a bit heavy and a bit complicated really the meaning of the the hebrew words the the Moody um, commentary that I had says this, he is everlastingly existent, unbounded by time, which is great and which is true. But it's not how we speak to our friends and our family, is it? You don't say, hi, Bob, have you heard about Jesus? He's everlastingly existent and unbounded by time. It's just not the general, the way we speak to people. So this morning, I'm just going to look at those three um, names for Jesus and try and keep it simple as simple as I can so um, let's have a quick look who was so obviously who was is talking about a past tense in the past and many people most people will admit that there was a Jesus who was around 2,000 years ago he spoke some great things he did some great things and that's a historical figure and that's true but the Bible speaks so much more than that. It puts so much more depth to it than that. In the book of John, he starts by saying, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And it says all things were created through him. And it goes on to say, um, he made his dwelling amongst us. It's referring to Jesus. So Jesus was right at the beginning before the universe was created. Jesus was there with God. And he was equal to God. It's just that he did choose to come from heaven and to live upon the earth in the form of a man. He came at a certain time and he came with a certain purpose. And his purpose was to restore, was to build that relationship between man and God again. That had been broken in the garden when that slippery snake came in and sin entered the world. So that's who was, Jesus always was. He's always been there. The next one, who is? Talking about present tense. How can Jesus be present when he died 2000 years ago? Simple answer, he did die 2000 years ago. But the foundation, the core of the Christian message is, Jesus rose from the grave. He's alive, he's called the living one and he returned back to heaven. So right now, Jesus is in heaven and he's sustaining, he's holding the whole universe together. He's all powerful, yet he can be all personal as well. As much as he's all powerful, he's present in people's lives and people's hearts. I know this and can speak from experience that when I became a Christian, I experienced the power of God and I personally met with God. I also know this because I speak to him every day and he speaks to me and he guides me and he directs me, he encourages me, sometimes he tells me off, but it's a personal living relationship. Also, I've experienced and seen that relationship grow over the years and I've seen God do amazing things in my life and in people's lives that I know. So I know he's completely alive and well and who is present today in people's lives the last one who was 
uh, who was, who is, and who is to come. Sorry. If you've been around church for many years, you'll know the teaching that the Bible teaches Jesus is going to come twice. The first time as a, as a lamb, a sacrificial lamb to pay the price of people's sins. But there's a second time he's coming, isn't there? And the Bible teaches, if you've never heard that, let me assure you, the Bible clearly teaches that Jesus is coming again to this earth. Jesus is coming back. And I'm not um, one for being a scaremonger. I just want to be honest this morning. That's what the Bible teaches. That's what I wholeheartedly believe. And I'm willing to say on YouTube in a public domain that I stand on the truth of the Bible. And it's a promise of God. He's coming back to put things right. He's coming back. To, to put an end to this evil world system. He's coming back to bring justice. He's coming back to bring a kingdom of love, joy and peace. And he's going to wipe away all the tears and all the sadness and all the disease and sickness. And I assure you when he comes back, if coronavirus is still around, Jesus will blow it away with his breath. It will be gone. I used to have a friend called Ben. He used to wear a t-shirt, a Catholic t-shirt. And he used to say... Um, had a picture of Jesus and it says Jesus is coming look busy and it's not really theologically correct but the thing is we don't have to look busy but the Bible says we should be ready so this morning if Jesus was going to come at some point today and the Bible teaches that he can come at any time of the day or night at any day in history my question to you this morning is are you ready are you ready to give an account for your life, for your actions, for all the things you've said and all the things you've done wrong? Because that's what Jesus is coming back for, isn't it? He's coming back to bring in his kingdom for everybody who, who loves him and follows him and, and who's right with him. And when we consider that he's coming in the future, that one day he's coming back, I heard a great quote from Abraham Lincoln he said this, the best bit about the future is it only happens one day at a time. So we don't need to worry about how many, how many years in the future. We just need to think about today and consider if he comes today, am I ready today to give an account to him? So today, as I said, have you made your peace with God? Do you know him personally? Has he been guiding you? And if you do know him, brilliant, fantastic. Are you serving him? Is he the first person that you're serving in, in your life? Or are you living life for yourself? Living life to um, just sit back and watch the telly and, and float along? But are you hungry to serve God and to see other people come to know him or to serve him in whatever capacity or whatever gift God has given you? Are you using your gifts and abilities to serve God and to bless other people? There's some people that try and figure out the when Jesus is coming back. And there's many people that, that get it wrong. There's many people that make mistakes. So I'm not going to be one of those. I heard a great story looking at um, for this Bible study. Um, there's a, a minister called Milton. He was called Milton Wright. And in 1870, he went to visit a friend. And he said to his friend, he said, I think the Bible teaches that there'll be no more inventions really outlandish statement in 1870 if you think of all the things that have been invented but he was so certain his friend was a a college um dean or professor and he said he said rubbish i think man will be able to fly within 50 years and the minister he walked out and he said blasphemy flight is reserved for the angels for those of you who know your history 30 years later the, the two brothers flew the Kitty Hawk in America. Um, interestingly, Milton Wright had two sons and it was his two sons that actually proved him wrong and they took the first flight. Um, planes aren't doing too well at the moment in the, in the pandemic, aren't they? But it's just a warning that we shouldn't, we shouldn't be worrying about the general details about when he's coming. We should be ready. Are we ready and expectant and putting our our lives fully into his hands so that he can use us and guide us and direct us to serve him and to love other people. We're called to love God and to love other people. So this morning, 
grace and peace to you from him who was and is and is to come. Short prayer before you go on your day. Yeah, Father, thank you that you're alive. Um, thank you that you are the living one. And thank you that anybody that is watching this can come to know you and can have peace with God and can experience the peace of God in their hearts. So Lord, today help us as your children to um, live expecting you to come back. Help us to have an urgency about how we live our lives, how we behave, how we speak, how our actions fall in line with how you expect us to live, to be loving, gentle, kind and compassionate, gracious and forgiving. Help us to love the, the poor and the needy in the world today. Um, and Lord, help us to be about your business, to be serving you whilst there is time. For we pray this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good day, everybody. See you all soon. God bless. Bye-bye.